Should we, should we mosey on over to uh, Web Slinger? Yes, yeah, so let's, let's go over to Web Slinger. Web Slinger. Right. So, what, okay. what are your what are your overall thoughts, Dre, on this attraction? Going into it, your expectations. When you're coming off of the ride, what what, what did you feel? And then I'll go ahead and share what I thought about it. I guess it's fair that this is where this is placed in this whole Avengers Campus segment, because um, we you know we had the good. Unfortunately, we got to go to the bad, right? Um, look, I, to me, I had heard from a lot of people that like, look, it's not a great attraction. Like, this is you know, this is it's basically Toy Story Movie Mania, and not a great version of it. And and the, you know, people get their arms tired when they're when they're doing the whole thing, and. You know, just not just not the great greatest thing to be added to any Disney park. So, you know, with that kind of expectation, I was like, okay, well, all right. So I will set my expectations accordingly. I'll set them kind of low, and right. we'll see where we go from here. And unfortunately, even with low expectations, I was still, <laughs> I was still disappointed. Yeah. Um, to be to be frankly honest. Now, look, there are some good things about this, right? I think the exterior is 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 pretty good. And the graffiti, you know, obviously, and the Circuit City, okay. But um, overall, I think aesthetically, this is this is this is pretty nice, and and it creates a, an amazing show space uh, that that we mentioned before. Uh, the queue was 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 decent, okay. A lot of it's outside, not the greatest, but okay. The pre-show I thought was really good. Um, yeah. Some people said, yeah, it goes for a little bit too long. Maybe that's the case uh, going forward, yeah. but. Honestly, I had a great time with it. Um, and the kind of technology that they're using there, it's you know, it's it's similar to the um, universal technology. I forget the term they have for it. It's like the uh, it's like Miracast or something like that. It's like a pepper scope, but projection uh, wise. This technology that they're having here is 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 really phenomenal. Really, you know, uh, when you see Peter Parker and Spider Man, really bright, really. Uh, you know, creates a creates a great effect right there. I can understand why they, they went with that rather than a, a, a audio animatronic uh, uh, version of him. Uh, it looks looks really good. You, it explains the story quite well. Um, just just I, I mean, I was I was impressed with that. It was kind of interesting because my mom was like, "Oh man, is he is he looking at me?" You know, it's like <laughs> it's like it kind of feels like that, doesn't it? Um, so that was really, really good. And then you get onto the ride itself. Yeah. Um, and oh my gosh, um, you get your glasses, high quality glasses. I will say, yeah, you get down there into the very small loading area. It's a very condensed ride. Cause obviously it took up the previous space that was, um, uh, it's tough to be a bug, right? So yeah. it's, it's a very small space. And I will say, to have a ride like this in this, um, take this amount of room, I think it's a good add to the park. I don't think you could leverage much more experience out of a space so small, especially you know nowadays. So I, I will give it that. But you, you sit down there and first of all, it's very chaotic, the attraction. Mm -hmm. um, it starts off, you know, I mean, it throws you out there, you know, right, <laughs> right at the gate, you know, right, right at the gate. It doesn't have like this kind of test and adjust period that, Toy Story Midway Mania does, so you kind of don't know what you're doing. I've heard, you know, from my friend Rudio, he's just like, I didn't know which web was mine. I kind of had that same issue at Me first. Me too. Me too. And what's interesting is, is I was kind of on the edge, be like I was kind of between two seats, and some of my webs were one color, and some of my webs were another because of of my proximity to the other seat and stuff like that. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um. And it, it's just, I don't know. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't yeah. quite work the way I think they thought. Uh, maybe it works better with the DLC. I don't know. But it's yeah. just, it's it's very chaotic. It's very, um, it's not very engaging as an interactive ride. Usually with interactive experiences, I'm very engaged. But it's like your Astro Blaster, your Toy Story Mania, Smuggler's Run especially. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm in it. I'm in the zone. This just never captivated me in the same way. Hey, look! I'm part of the gaming generation. I game all the time. This is just not one of those things that, you know, that 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 got me into it. And uh, yeah. the experience not, not not great. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I I, I concur. I completely concur. Um, here's the thing: I have, I have a few problems with this attraction. Um, mm. Number one, I don't feel like elements of this ride fit with the MCU at all. It, it feels more like if you ever watch like Disney XD. 
yeah. with like, you know, the Spider-Man series and stuff they have on those kind of networks. It yeah. feels more like something akin to that yeah. than it does the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The, the, yeah. the animation, the graphics, the character designs of like the spider bots, it's very cartoony. Yeah. And it doesn't feel like, I don't feel like I'm part of that MCU. This isn't the Spider-Man I saw in Endgame or Infinity War or whatever. This is more, it's XD to me. It's yeah. XD totally. And the spider bots are very cartoony. So that was one major problem I had with it. It felt very cartoony. Yeah. Um, I had the same issue you had with the webs. Yeah. It, it's very hard to determine who is who. Yeah. I'm doing my webs and sometimes I can tell it's me. <clears throat> but a lot of times I can't tell. Is it this person next to me? Is it me? Yeah. It, 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 it's very chaotic. It's really hard to determine if I'm shooting. It, it kind of reminds me of Buzz Lightyear which is a step down from Midway Mania, which is very clear yeah. and concise. When I'm doing Midway Mania, I know this is my, you know, my projectile, these are my cards, right? These are yeah, my yeah. dark, this is my, this, my rings. I know for mm -hmm. a fact who is who. On this one, I felt very much like Buzz Lightyear with the laser yeah. beams. Like it's kind of like just all over the place and you can't really tell what's going on. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah. Something that's probably going to be reprogrammable, I think, going forward. They're going to yeah. change. Up. I'm certain, like we talked about earlier, they're probably going to do some alterations to it when the new Spider-Man movie comes out. It's almost a given that yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's a good family ride, you know, it, which is good because they replaced Bugs Land and Tough to Be a Bug, you know, with this. Mm. So it, it, didn't, it shouldn't have been too intense. But uh, yeah, it, it's an okay ride. It's like a C plus, you know. It, it, it's kind of there. It's not something I have to go on every time. Yeah. It's not a bad ride. It's just not great. You know, it's interesting. Look, uh, we, viewers, we get it. We understand. This is not a ride that was built for you know. This is not Rise mm -hmm. 2.0, right? Right. This right. was built for a certain clientele, and 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 DCA. Losing Bugs Land lost a lot of family type attractions. So obviously the first thing that gets you know brought out is a family type attraction. This is what this is. We get it, we understand it. But even as a family type attraction, even like it's just you know, usually family type attractions the whole family can enjoy. <laughs> yeah. And I could just tell some of the folks that were with me, just they weren't having the greatest time. Yeah. It, it's just they could have done better, guys. It's just yeah. it just isn't that great. Um, it's interesting because when we all kind of came off, it was one of the first times in a long, long time when we came off an attraction and we never talked about it once. It's just we were wow. almost silent on it. Um, usually it's like, oh, that was so cool. Like, you know, <laughs> love this more, love this. Not so with this. Wow. It was almost, it reminded me a lot of coming off of Superstar Limo. I'm sorry. I, you know, that's that's kind of what it reminded me of. Is when we got we got off, we didn't talk about it much. Yeah. And that that's that's really unfortunate. Um, Avengers Campus, I think, deserved a lot better uh, than just this attraction. I think it it really needed a big time e ticket to kind of round these things out. It's kind of like a microcosm of the Star Wars Galaxy's Edge issue, right? It right. came out with Smuggler's Run and so much expectation was placed on it that it wasn't really fair really rise was supposed to take that big time slot and unfortunately they advertised it as if million falcon was that right and it really was never supposed to be that um you know it's just uh yeah and it's interesting too i um i'm kind of an operational kind of nut uh so <laughs> i kind of stayed behind and did some some math and that right Judging on dispatch, judging on intervals and stuff like that, judging on how uh, how many people can be loaded in each vehicle and, and how many vehicles are distributed and so forth, <sighs> maybe a thousand an hour type of traction, and wow. that's not great. I mean, that's like Dumbo. Yeah. Uh, so um, clearly, that is a family attraction. Clearly, for an attraction like that, you would kind of expect that kind of throughput and capacity, but with the emphasis and onus placed on it, it's just unfair. This really shouldn't have a boarding group system to it. This is why so few people can actually get into this attraction because it only does a thousand an hour. That means for a 16 hour day, only 16,000 people can actually get on. Wow. And it's just, <clears throat> it's, it's, uh, it's an issue folks. It's an issue. It is. It is. It's an okay attraction. I think you're right. I think it, I think it would be better perceived 
if this was the appetizer to the entree e-ticket down the road a little bit, um, I think that it would be a much more, it's weird. You wouldn't think it would, ex like you wouldn't think one ride would affect the other, but they do. Uh, um, they do. And when, when you're, when you're kind of seeing this as an overall experience, yeah. um, like rise of the resistance changed galaxy's edge. It was a game changer for that, you know, and it made Falcon even better because yeah. it oh, now yeah. Millennium Falcon was like a compliment add on. It wasn't the focus when you have something like this as a focus, it's just disappointing. Now I think eventually when they do build that e-ticket and you have something like a rise of the resistance sitting there in the back and then you have a more family and kind of modest attraction like web singers, I think it'll yeah. be better perceived, but when it's the, when it's the marquee, a thing, the marquee attraction on opening day, eh, I think I still think mission breakouts, the star of the show.